What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to have a look at my game week 24 team selection, any planned transfers, a little bit on chip strategy and future planning as well. Welcome back everyone, FBL Harry here. Game week 23 has just drawn to a close. I am recording before the Manchester City versus Arsenal game. So I have a few players left to play. I will update the points, I'll update the rank after that match takes place, but I cannot record after that match. So hopefully some points for my Manchester City and Arsenal players that I have. Odegaard, we've got Mares in there. De Bruyne, hopefully he turns a corner on his form as well. Before we dive into the video, we're gonna have a review of game week 23 as it is so far. If you haven't already, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you for all of you who were so concerned in the last video about my sunburn. Hopefully, in this one, it looks like it's gone down a little bit. I have been applying the sun cream that a lot of you suggested and were very, very concerned about, so thank you. Hopefully looking a little bit better than I was in my last video. Still on holiday, but hopefully the production and the audio quality still look up to our normal standards. So game week 23, how did we get on so far? So it is a small green arrow at time of recording. Of course, still that game to go. If Martinelli and Nketiah get some good points whilst the rest of my players don't, that could turn to a red arrow, but I think that is unlikely. We've moved up from about 3,000 to about 2.3k at time recording. And again, I will update that after we do have that Manchester City versus Arsenal game. In terms of points, a lot of them came in from Riyad Mahrez. Very happy with him. Still one of the best transfers I've made all season, to be honest. And I decided to start Luke Shaw as well. So 12 points from Luke Shaw, 12 so far from Mahrez, plus the fixtures to play tonight. It looks like Arsenal are going to be without... Thomas Party, whilst Erling Haaland has travelled with the Manchester City squad. So that might boost the potential output of those Manchester City players, particularly Mares and De Bruyne as well. De Bruyne has been a big red flag for a lot of us over the past couple of weeks. And we will be looking to sell him for a certain Egyptian who did score in game week 23. Now, what a way to sell you guys to watch this video rather than calling this the most boring week in FPL so far this season. I put a poll out on Twitter which got 4,000 votes. And 66% of you, so two thirds of teams basically said that they're going to roll their transfer this week. They don't want to make a transfer. They're going to play it as it is with their team as it is now and then potentially use two free transfers of course game week 25 is both a blank and double so they're going to have the players they have this week and use two transfers next week to plan for the blank and double we then also had 25 percent of you only using your free transfers with a very very small portion of you making big changes to your teams or even playing a chip going into game week 24 so i've spoken about it previously i think it's a great week to roll your transfer a lot of you in the comments are asking should i make transfers the majority of you the answer i'll give you is unless you really feel you have to do roll a transfer let's get an extra bit of information let's see how those doubling and blank teams look going into game week 25 looking at game week 27 as well and then have two transfers to make going into game week 25. Now, one of the big reasons people want to roll transfers, going and pushing their transfers further down the line, is the schedule that we've got. And one of the big questions, again, after we got the doubling game week 27 announced, is what does the updated chip strategy look like? Now, I will do an in-depth video on where I think chip strategy is, where I personally put my chip strategy as well. But here is a brief overview. I think we're down to about four potential chip strategies that we could be playing. So, of course, we have the doubling game week 27 instead of game week 26. We have the doubling game week 29, which is highly predicted with the black in between them in game week 28 of course then game week 32 likely to be a blank we've known that for a while we then we have the doubling game week 34 and double in game week 37 as well there is a small chance that one of the other yellow normal game weeks gets a small double one or two fixtures like we have in game week 27 for example but this is vaguely likely to be what our chip strategy and what our fixture schedule looks like in terms of chip strategy and where i think we're at i feel we have four chip strategies that you can potentially pick from one that's being highly spoken about on twitter at the moment is the wild card in game week 27, free hit game week 28, and bench boost in game week 39. So what this allows you to do is you use your wild card in game week 27 to bring in lots of Brighton Brentford players for example you free hit in game week 28 when it is the blank you can sell all those players have a good week and then of course bench boost in game week 29 when you've played your wild card to have a lot of players in that week it does mean you use all of your chips up very soon but there is a lot of popularity for this chip strategy I don't personally like using all my chips up that early but it is a strong strategy and I can see why people are wanting to do it 
The next two strategies are very similar. Free hit in either game with 28 or game with 29, depending if your team is set up better for the blank or better for the double. And this might depend on how many assets you have from the likes of Brighton and Brentford, how many assets you have from the likes of Chelsea, who do have a fixture in game week 28, and the other teams that have a fixture in game week 28, but then are unlikely to double in game week 29. So it will depend on your team about which you're more likely to play in those two. Then you wildcard in game week 33 and bench boost in game week 34. The final one is just a small change. If you think you can get through game week 27, 28, 29, Without using a chip, you could wild card 33, bench boost 34, and then free hit in the big double at the end of the season in game week 37. This one would allow you to have the optimal double game week players in 34 and in 37 as well. I personally think the chip strategy I'm eyeing up is probably the free hit in game week 29 chip strategy and then looking at a wild card 33 bench boost 34 is currently where i'm at but we won't be able to decide officially until game week 26 because between game week 25 and game week 26 we have the next round of the fa cup which will confirm the blanks in game week 28 and give us a much better picture of the blank in game week 32 and the doubles in the remaining week so this is currently an update but wait until game week 26 before really finalizing your chip strategy so as I said, I am hoping to roll a transfer, but the transfer that I did talk about doing into game week 25, there is a chance I'd do it earlier this week just because I'm not loving Kevin De Bruyne's form at all at the moment. His ways positioning, his FPL returns, a lot of it are not good. And I do plan on going Kevin De Bruyne to Mo Salah. Mo Salah did get a goal. Now a lot of that was down to Pickford's poor goalkeeping in game week 23. And I do prefer the fixture, of course, we have Kevin De Bruyne playing against Nottingham Forest and then you have Mo Salah against Newcastle. However, there is the Champions League games for Manchester City. Is there a chance that Kevin De Bruyne even gets rested in that Nottingham Forest game? That is also something I need to consider. So I am planning this transfer going into game week 25. There is part of me that wonders if I bring it forward to game week 24. As I've mentioned before, this will give me six, in theory, double game week players going into game week 25 and a, a squad of about 10 players, maybe one blank, depending on whether Sam Greenwood plays or not for Leeds in that blank game week. So 10 players, six of which are doubling. Of course, Patterson is a bit of a dubious one. I probably only expect him to start one. He is back in training, of course. Kilman new signing. Then it would be Mo Salah in, and then I would have triple Arsenal as well. I'm quite happy how I'd be set up for game week 25, only using one transfer, meaning I would have two transfers going into game week 26 and looking at game week 27 as well. I'd be pretty well set up to plan for those fixtures as well. So I don't necessarily think I want to go completely crazy in time targeting blank and double game week 25, but just one transfer potentially to go and get in Mo Salah. Now, if I do delay the transfer going into game week 25, run doing it in 24, it would just give me that extra bit of information about whether Salah's the one that I want, whether it be Gakpo, maybe we look back in defense in Trent. I think it's unlikely, but it would just give me that extra bit of information. So in terms of game week 24 team selection, I do plan on rolling my transfer. I do think an extra week of information is more important than bringing in Salah away at Newcastle. The only change to my last video is actually I plan on starting Kilman over Ben White. I think there's a chance Tommy Asu starts and they're away to Aston Villa and Aston Villa have looked pretty good under Unai Emery. So we start with Kepper in goal, Southampton at home, very happy with him. In defence, Kilman comes in with Bournemouth at home. We then of course have Luke Shaw. I continue to hold him until the blank when I'll likely sell him or even if not, I'll sell him going into game week 26 as well. They have Leicester at home along with Marcus Rashford of Manchester United as well. I do start Trippier over Ben White. Not completely sure about which of these I'll go with if I do start Kilman, but I do like the home fixture that they have. Newcastle are pretty good at home. Salah and Liverpool are scoring a few more goals, but still not that reliable. We have the triple Manchester City attack away at Forest in Mares, in De Bruyne and in Haaland. I am a little bit concerned with Champions League restarting where there'll be a bit of rotation in that squad, but there's not much I can do about that I'm going to start all three of them we have the triple Arsenal again away at Aston Villa with one of them on the bench but Saka and Odegaard both starting with Rashford in there of course and then Harry Kane up front Kamsi Armband currently on Haaland but I will be looking to potentially see if there's any doubt about Haaland starting this one again with the Champions League and if not I might end up moving it to the likes of Riyad Mahrez or Bakaya Saka who's currently got the vice captaincy armband it could also go on Harry Kane but their recent form with Benton Cole getting injured is not something I love at the moment so this is my current lineup for game week 24 plan on rolling transfer plan on starting Kilman over Ben White if you have enjoyed the video 
Do not forget to smash the like button. We can try and hit 1,000 likes on the video. Subscribe if you are new around here and enjoying these FPL videos. Any questions you have about your team, any thoughts you have about my team, my transfers, drop it all in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer it before the deadline. Of course, I answer all the questions made in the first two hours of every single video. So if you are not already subscribed and you don't have notifications turned on already, turn them on to get your questions answered in every single video if you do in the first couple of hours. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck in the remainder of game week 23. Good luck in game week 24 when it does come around and I'll see you all again very soon.